talk about the techniques that I've used to transform my life. And then I'm going to talk about procrastination and give you some tips and, and an exercise to, to help deal with procrastination. Has there ever been a time when you wanted to do something but fear or anxiety has got in your way? There's every opportunity now to get outside my comfort zone and have new experiences and achieve new goals. My biggest fear has been public speaking and this is the first time I've spoken in public. Besides, Phil rang me last week to ask what I do with this talk tonight and I said I'd have a think about it and, and get back to him later on that day. And of course I was thinking to myself, now let me think of all the reasons why I can't do this talk. <laughs> um, and I have, I've got all day to come up with a good excuse and then I can bring him back this evening with a really good excuse and tell him why, why I can't stand here and do the talk. And so I had clients all day, so it didn't give me too much time to think. But I thought, well, maybe I haven't got time to prepare. And I thought, well, it's not really a very good excuse. So I thought, well, maybe perhaps on the evening, perhaps I'm busy that evening, perhaps I'm washing my hair or painting my nails or, or walking the dog. So then I decided, no, this isn't a very good excuse either. So then I decided, rather than focusing on the negative and why I couldn't do it, to focus on why I could do it and all the advantages of doing it, which would be to increase my confidence and to hopefully inspire other people from my life experiences and from the work that I'm doing now. In 1996, I developed severe ME and fibromyalgia, which stopped, eventually stopped me nursing. I'd been doing agency nursing and working 70 to 80 hours a week, most weeks, because I never knew when I'd get work and when I wouldn't get work. And I was trying to convince myself at the time that I needed the money. But looking back on it now, the reality of the situation was that I wasn't happy in my marriage. I didn't have the confidence to go out to social clubs and things on my own. And so it meant either going out to work or staying at home with my husband, sitting in front of the television because he didn't like to socialise at the time. My ME gradually got worse and worse until I couldn't work anymore. I had severe muscle pains all over my body, joint pains, um, food allergies and chemical intolerances, digestive problems. Most days I felt like I'd run a marathon and had severe flu, as well as feeling like I'd drunk about 12 pints of beer. Um, my eyesight was so badly, my eyes were so badly affected some days that it was difficult to open my eyes. Some days it was difficult to even eat anything because my mouth was so painful. And on a good day I could read a page of a book about 10 times and then have no memory at all of what I'd read. And to have, try and have a conversation with people was extremely difficult most of the time because I wasn't able to recall words uh, or just, just generally chat, chat to people and it was extremely tiring to try and have a conversation. So life was pretty difficult and of course this led to, to depression as well and lots of other medical problems including a, an underactive thyroid. Eventually I began to feel suicidal. A number of times I had felt suicidal and contemplated taking my own life. And one day, four years ago, the last time I felt suicidal, I started getting all this intuition and guidance. And the guidance was telling me to go along to my ME support group, where somebody called Kyle Davis, was a metaphysician, was giving a talk about his different healing techniques. And I'd seen this person about four years previous and I'd had some improvement in my house. And I'd been able to go off to Canada for my 40th birthday and walk around this Whistler Mountain, which was a huge achievement for me. I'd been able to start kayaking there, mountain biking, um, walking through the Rockies, having all kinds of adventures. And I thought, great, this is it. My life's turning around and everything's gonna be amazing now. But unfortunately, soon after I came back, my health deteriorated again and was worse than ever an emotional freedom technique and I could have done this training in Cardiff however my guidance drew me to someone on the internet called Carl Dawson and when I ran him up and told him I wanted to train with an emotional freedom technique and I told him about my ME and fibromyalgia and other health problems he said to me you also need to train in matrix for imprinting and my initial thought was he's trying to make more money out of me and then my guidance kicked in again and said, no, that's exactly what, what you need to train in. 
so I did it all as part of the one course. I did the matrix three printing straight away after the emotional freedom technique training. And then that emotional freedom technique training allowed me and matrix three printing to completely recover from all my health problems, including even coming off thyroxine for an underactive thyroid. It allowed me to transform my relationships with my parents with my friends. I've attracted very controlling friends into my life that are very manipulative. And now I attract friendships that are very loving, caring and supportive. Also my relationship with my husband, we've been together for 33 years. But as I went through these changes, I've been convincing myself that I was happily married and had to face up to the fact that while my husband would do anything for me and really love me, we didn't have the intimacy and the connection that I was wanting in a relationship. I'd go to hug him and he'd walk away or I'd look in his eyes and he'd look away and, and I was wanting a, you know, a deeper connection and it was just making leaving me feeling rejected. And I'd asked my husband, I'd told him what I was needing and he hadn't been able to meet those needs. So one day then it came to me actually having to say to him, look, I can't take this anymore. I need to walk away from the marriage. I just can't deal with it. So on hearing that, my husband then decided, well, how about you do one of your matrix, training, matrix therapy sessions on me on the time that I saw my best friend killed when I was five years old, hit by a lorry. Because having an experience like that gives people the subconscious belief that it's not safe to form connections with people because they'll be taken away from us. So just one session on my husband completely transformed him. After that session, he couldn't keep his hands off me. He was constantly telling me that he loved me, hugging me. And ever since, it's been like we've been on permanent honeymoon. He started writing poetry for the first time in his life. And of course, all those poems were about his love for me. And also, he started dancing. I'm passionate about five rhythms dance. And he completely refused to do any kind of dancing, including disco dancing up until that point and he started coming along dancing and now he's the most amazing dancer and it's such a joy to watch him dance. It allowed me to set up the business of my dreams. When I was nursing, all I could do was give people toxic drugs that would often cause other side effects that they would then need more drugs for. Whereas now, one session, um, my husband, uh, his diabetes went away. Another session, his high blood pressure went away. And that was the first session that I did with him when he didn't believe in any alternative healing techniques at all. And I had to make out that I needed someone to practice on when I first qualified. And so I said, I know you don't believe in any alternative healing, you think it's a bloody rubbish. But if you can just go with these techniques for me to have some practice, I'd be really grateful. And so he did. And the next day he checked his blood pressure and it was normal, the first time in many, many years. He checked it every day for 12 days, and at the end of those 12 days, he came to the conclusion, yes, these techniques do, do work. Transform the lives, so I help other people to transform their, their lives. In cognitive behavior therapy, neurolinguistic programming, angel healing, counseling, heart intelligence, and the courses as well. And I'm passionate about learning, and I'm still always looking for new things that I can learn and reading the latest research. T was invented in the 1990s by Gary Craig and was developed in thought field therapy. It combines Chinese medicine with modern psychology and it involves tapping on the acupuncture meridians on the body, on the face and the hands, which sends kinetic energy along the um, energy meridians in the same way that acupuncture with needles does. And as we're tapping, we're also focusing on the problem, talking about the problem, and tuning into where we feel it in the body. So this changes, this moves the emotions from the body, as well as where the energy is stuck in the body, and also allows us to change our, our beliefs about it. Between 90 to 98% of everything we think, do and say comes from our subconscious mind. And those beliefs, uh, in the subconscious and the learning, most of that happens between the naught and six year age when we're in a hypnotic state and we take in everything as the truth. And a lot of things we learn from misperceptions and misunderstandings 
and we watch our parents and we think that what they do is right, we see our teachers doing things. Um, also from having sort of traumas, perhaps people being told as children they're not good enough or they're stupid, maybe a teacher telling them off in school might give them a fear for life of, of speaking in public or connecting, perhaps going out networking, meeting other people because it can lead to various beliefs that, that a lot of people have, like perhaps um, a belief they're not good enough, a belief they have to be perfect. But various different beliefs that, that block us and get in our way of being able to be our real true self and really a lot of people getting out there in the world and doing what they're passionate about, making the income that they want to make, perhaps having the number of clients that they want to make and, having a, and above all, having, having the fun that they want to have in life. Um, ne negative emotions, fears, phobias, emotional, physical, sexual abuse, sexual problems, confidence issues, anxiety, um, achieving goals, clearly limiting beliefs like maybe if someone's thinking they're not good enough or they have to be perfect or they're unlovable, um, addictions, physical pain, clearing past dif difficult memories, um, sleep problems, setting boundaries, increasing the number of clients we have, and also increasing our income, and also uh, pro procrastination as well. So, trauma can be either physical, perhaps from um, an accident, a car accident, or other form of accident, or it can be emotional. And each time we have these traumas, some of our energy blocks in the body which then results can result in emotional problems and sometimes physical health problems as well. So these techniques are able to clear that energy from the body. So there's a, an exercise I'd like everyone to do. If you can think of someone that's made you angry perhaps or upset you, can you all think of someone? Okay, and if you can just close in your eyes and just think of that situation and then just tune into your body and be aware in your body that the humans are affected, they're switched on and off by our internal environment and this is affected by our thoughts, our emotions and our physiology of our body. He's also found that they're affected by our external environment and this is things like our um, food, um, toxins and trauma. And it's possible to completely go back and, and change all that programming as well as change the experiences that we had in our childhood and to needs that weren't met, um, basic needs for love and connection. We often will go through our life if they haven't been met, trying to get them met in a needy way of other people and other people can sense that neediness and it tends to, to push them away. So we're able to, to get those needs met for our, for our younger self so that it changes not only our thoughts but also changes our, our behaviour as adults. The emotion dream technique tapping on our younger selves, which might be something that happened last week, but most things normally go back to the child of 0 to 6 age. So we remove the emotions and we let our younger selves take any action they didn't get to take at the time. And they're, they're like real people, these younger parts of us. And, and that's what holds us back in life now and controls us. If those younger parts of us aren't, aren't happy because of past experiences that we've had, so, so we can remove the emotions, let them take any actions they didn't get to take. Any needs that weren't met, maybe perhaps they need a help from their parents or, or someone else or anything they need to do can happen. And then the beliefs that were made at the time, we actually changed the beliefs. And while this is going on, people are in a very relaxed state um, as we're accessing the, the subconscious mind. And I've tried many different, and I've tried hundreds of therapies before finding these to try and get well and recover. And I kept going back trying those therapies over and over again. And a few of them would help a little bit, perhaps for a day or so. But nothing has had the, the huge impact that the combination of things that, that I'm doing now has. For example would be when my husband saw his best friend killed, um, hit by the lorry when he was five years old. Once we'd removed all the trauma and tapped and he'd connected with his younger self, um, I'm very intuitive and what I picked up was that he wanted the lorry to turn into a, a big baby dog with floppy ears and come along and scoop the, the boy up and float up to heaven uh, waving his paw. And I asked him to check with his younger self, was this the case? 
and he said that was exactly what, what his younger self was wanting. So when he looks back now, the only picture he sees is this little boy floating up to heaven. But he t after we'd done the work, he told me it used to wake him up at four o'clock every morning, which I was completely unaware of. All I knew was that he was tired all the time and that he would get cross and grumpy at times. And since doing this work, for the one session, he now sleeps through the night. He's got so much more energy, he's got tired, and he's just a different person to it to be able to get on with. He's, he's a lot more fun, and it's just made such a, such a huge difference to him. If there's been uh, a major trauma or a death, we don't change the fact that it's happened, but we can change all the circumstances around it in our minds and programming. If there's been a small incident, say someone got up on stage at school to give a talk and tripped as they were getting up and gave a bad talk, well, once we've tapped to clear all the trauma, we can then change the picture um, and let our younger selves actually give a good talk and then bring a new picture down into the body with them doing the good talk and if they want to hear praise or clapping, then we, we can let that happen. And so when they look back then, they only see the new picture and all the confidence um, that, that goes with it. Everyone at some point in their life avoids taking action um, with certain things and some people procrastinate it a lot more than others. If someone's got good subconscious beliefs, if they've got good self-value and self-worth, then often they find it very easy to move through life and create what they want to create in life. But if someone's got low self-worth, low confidence, it can be very difficult for them to get out there in the world and create the world they like that they want to create. So some of the things people procrastinate over are exercising, sorting the house out or maybe the garage, um, introducing yourself to somebody that you'd like to meet, standing up here giving a talk, <laughs> um, precious commodity that we have which is time. Deep down, they know that they're wasting time and they're missing out on life. It affects our health, our happiness, our career, our relationships, finances, confidence and well-being. Now if you can imagine yourself doing that thing that you've been avoiding and see, see how it feels. And now if you can imagine having that task completed and see how that feels hear what you're saying to yourself and what other people are saying to you. Take as long as you need and whenever that feels complete, just open your eyes and come back into it. When they're working at the gym, they see other people using it in the gym. They see people using it when, when they're walking along. So when emotions come up for us during the day, maybe someone cuts us up in the traffic or someone says something to us that upsets us, we're able to use these techniques and then shift it out of the body rather than have to keep carrying it around with us for the rest of our life. And also when someone does trigger us, a lot of people kind of overreact to what's been said and maybe someone makes us angry but if we ask ourselves what does this situation or who does it remind me of then normally that will go back to our past life pre previous experiences in our life and quite often our childhood where the people made us feel angry and so we'll be feeling not just the anger from the person that's triggered us but also the anger from the past experience similar experiences that we've had so when we're able to go back and clear all the emotion, the anger, or whatever the emotion might be from the earlier experiences, then we don't tend to react so much to that person. And, and I used to get triggered quite easily, but if someone upsets me now, very often I don't get upset, um, angry. I, I'm able to be compassionate with that person and see where they're coming from and see what, why they've got that pain um, and be there to, to support that person. So that's made a huge, huge difference to, to my life, you know, not being so, so reactive to people as well, which has been a, there, there's been so many benefits, it's, it's like I live in a completely different world now, it's just changed every single aspect of, of my life, and I continue to use these techniques on myself, and life just continues to, to get better, better and better. Thank you, Even just for the flowers around me, the connections I have with people, um, Everything from when I get up in the morning, being grateful just to have a house and a bed and the walls being able to put the central heating on, to have food in the cupboards. Because I know so many people around the world, but these basic things are to have water, clean water coming out the taps. So many people around the world don't have these things that we take for granted here. And, and when, we look, when we think and look at what we've got, even if perhaps like we are going through difficult times, there's so much in life to be grateful for. 
if we actually face up to the pain, it does actually reduce rather than if we just keep trying, trying to push it away. Let's look now at the types of procrastinator. The first type is the arousal type, where they leave things to the last minute, so they get that last minute euphoric rush to get things done. I can see someone who's smiling, so some of you know, know that one. The next one, are, and, so, and often people have a combination of, of all these forms of procrastination. Uh, the next type is avoiders, and these people avoid doing things because of fear of failure. They're concerned what others think about them, and they'd rather have others think that they lack effort rather than that they, they, they lack ability. The next type then is the decisional procrastinators. These people can't make a decision. They want to absolve themselves of the responsibility of the outcome of the event. And finally, there's denial, which involves lying to ourselves, which is what I did in my marriage. I was trying to convince myself that I was happily married previously because my husband would do anything for me and took such good care of me. I'm sure that she when I was not being able to care for patients properly, um, various things going wrong on the ward because of not being enough staff to, to run the wards. And I'd be driving home in tears from work. But I still kept going back, putting myself in that same situation because I felt that that's what I should be doing and not actually facing up to how, how unhappy I was and until my health just got worse and worse and ended up in me getting the DME, which then actually stopped me from, from nursing and took me out of that situation. So I think if I hadn't had the DME and the car accident and the flu virus, which had I not been in such a stress situation, I would have come through the accident and the flu virus without the enemy. But because my body was so stressed, it wasn't able to recover from those traumas. But had I not had those accidents, I would still probably be nursing now, still be very stressed, very unhappy, not found these techniques, and not been out in the world inspiring other people to change and helping other people change their lives. So looking back, I feel very grateful that I had the car accident and that I got the ME and five myalgia, even though at the time it, it nearly took my life. The cost to health alone can be huge to procrastination. There was a study done on students um, over one term, the students that procrastinated, and the students that procrastinated were found to have increased health problems in terms of increased flu and colds and other viruses, um, increased gastrointestinal problems and increased insomnia. The beliefs are what cause us to procrastinate. These beliefs may include beliefs like, I have to be perfect, what if I fail, I'm a failure, um, what if they reject me, I'm not good enough, I'm unlovable, I'm too old, too young, um, too inexperienced. O occasionally some of these beliefs can, can be valid, but normally they're, they're just an excuse to, to procrastinate and, and put off what we're wanting to do. So, how do we take action and overcome this procrastination? For most things, that there's never going to be an ideal time to do them. So it means really just, just getting on with them. So there are various different things that we can use. Um, a lot of things can cause overwhelm. Perhaps someone's got, got a goal to achieve something. So if we're feeling overwhelmed, it's important to break that down into smaller, smaller, smaller steps. And if we're still feeling overwhelmed, to break that down again to even four smaller steps. So maybe someone's perhaps got the whole garage they want to short, sort out. So maybe just breaking it down to one shelf, perhaps to do one weekend, or even half a shelf, or even perhaps a box on one of those shelves to do one weekend. Other techniques include making a list and then ticking things off as you do them, prioritising what needs to be done, and often doing the thing that we don't want to do most, get, getting it done. Um, because sometimes if we start doing other things, I know in the past that my house has always ended up very clean when I've had things to do, 
um, I've always managed to find other things um, to, 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 to divert my attention. So if we prioritise and then allocate time to do that particular thing, and remove distractions such as perhaps turning the mobile phone off and not going and checking the emails or going on Facebook or various other distractions that we can have, also doing one thing at a time and then actually getting that thing done and then we can feel that sense of achievement. For some people, their best time of day to do things can be in the morning, they can be more motivated to get things done. Other people, perhaps the afternoon or, or, or the evening, they're more motivated. But if we're tired or if we're hungry, it's very easy to lose that motivation. Another um, idea is to ask yourself if you can get support, can somebody help you? Is there someone that can give you advice? Has someone done what you need to do? Can they give you any ideas around how they achieved it? Also to have a consequence if you don't do it. And then to reward yourself afterwards for achieving the, the, the goal when it's completed. Telling someone you're about to do a particular thing and I'd like to invite everyone here this evening, if there's something that you've been putting off for a long time, perhaps to um, put down on a sheet of paper that I brought with me tonight, um, what it is that you've been putting off, or if you're not able to, um, to tell other people, just to, to, to list it as problem X or goal X, and then when we meet back here in a month's time then, to see then if you've actually achieved that, if, or, or, or to put a time limit of what, when you're going to do it, perhaps a month or maybe sort of six months, so that we can then see if, if you've achieved that goal, if, if people would like to people inspire you as well, and who are out in the world creating what they want to create in life, encourages us as well. What are the consequences of not achieving this goal? And then what are the consequences to yourself and to other people of, of achieving that goal? So I'd like to invite you all to do an exercise now. If you can all think of something that you've liked, that you've been procrastinating on, that you'd like to achieve, with naught being that you're happy to do it and 10 being you really don't want to do it. So something perhaps it's around a four or five. The words of Henry David Thoreau, most people live lives of quiet desperation and die with their son and son. I want you to sing your song before you die. Moving forward and getting out of my comfort zone and embracing life has transformed my life in so many ways and given me so much freedom and pleasure. Moving forward can transform your life too. Ask yourself, what kind of life do you want to live? Do you want to live a small life limited by your fear of moving forward or a big life in which you free yourself of fear and embrace the opportunities that lie ahead? When you're lying on your deathbed, do you want to be thinking of unaccomplished dreams and all the things you could have done or experienced? Or do you want to be looking back on life filled with passion and fulfilment? How about taking daily small steps, one step at a time, and then another step, and then another, in a direction that inspires you? What do you want? Do you want more fun, more love, more passion, more happiness, more money? more free time. My guidance saved my life so that I could help inspire others. Come and chat to me if I can help you further. I offer free 20 minute consultations to everyone as well. And if anyone's got any questions now, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you very much for